Hello, beloved, and welcome to this um, evening message where we are going to look at the first resurrection. It's just a topical message to take some of the issues, and I'm going to do a few of them as time goes on, I hope, uh, and uh, as God allows me. I would like to do a few topical messages where we look at certain aspects of the the book of Revelation, what happens at the end, th those kind of things, to kind of give us a systematic the theological idea of what certain things, what it, what it means. For example, the first resurrection, uh, the thousand-year reign of Christ, you know, those kind of things, the wedding feast of the Lamb, those kind of things. Uh, I would like to touch on those things, the, the mark of the beast, the antichrist, the false prophet, you know, those kind of things that we spend some time uh, just looking at those topics independently, you know, all right. Obviously, we're going to work through the book of Revelation verse by verse as well, but I believe that we need to have some of these things answered as well, or let's say have a good systematic theological understanding of, for example, the first resurrection and also other things. So before we continue, let's just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can study your word and thank you that we can get some understanding of some difficult topics that we find in the book of Revelation and we find in the New Testament and even the Old Testament uh, with regards to the second coming of Christ. There's so much involved. And I pray, Father, that you will please enable us to understand, enable me to teach your people and um, enable them to to take to heart and to understand those things that, that comes from you. And the ideas that comes from me, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that it will not even go into their hearts. But those that comes from you, the things that comes from you, from your word, I pray that your word will accomplish what it is set out to accomplish. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to look at the first resurrection. And the first thing I can say to you, and, and this is when we look at the, the New Testament specifically, we see that all born-again believers, those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ alone unto salvation, they will be part of the first resurrection. Okay? Now the question is, what is this first resurrection? What does it mean? Now, I believe that it is one of the most awesome subjects in the whole of the Bible. And that is what the Bible says about life after death. What happens after a believer dies? Now, practically, I think that all human beings somehow dream of kind of walking, you know, from physical death into some other state of eternal blissfulness. I like that word, blissfulness, or eternal happiness. But it's interesting that it's only the Bible that gives us detail, and, and we can call it amazing detail, about this, how can I say, eternal state that believers will find themselves in when they die. Obviously, the Bible also speaks about the eternal state of the unbelievers, and uh, it's not going to be as, yeah, it's not awesome at all. But the Bible talks about both. The Bible actually is the only book that gives us a, a very good understanding of what happens after we die. Okay. It's interesting that it, when we talk about life after death, it is mentioned so frequently in the Bible uh, that if there is no resurrection of the dead, then the Bible actually becomes unreliable. That's how serious the resurrection is. So, and obviously the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, if there is no resurrection, then our faith is futile. Uh, our preaching means nothing. Uh, everything about the Christian faith means absolutely nothing if there is no resurrection from the dead. Because remember that Jesus is the first one. Yeah? He's the... He's the first one who rose from the grave, or rose from the dead, and because he rose from the dead, he is able to raise others, those who died in Christ. He's able to raise them from the dead. And John chapter 6 is so beautiful 
that where he speaks about the father gives him certain people and he will make sure that he raises them in the last days absolutely amazing and this is what we're talking about here this first resurrection you see every promise to believers concerning the afterlife is basically dependent on a bodily resurrection a physical resurrection and the expression the the resurrection from the dead it is said that it's found 49 times in the bible 49 times in the bible we find this expression the resurrection from the dead now let's quickly jump to revelation chapter 20 now this is going to the end of the bible okay where we are going to take a look at what revelation chapter 20 verse 1 to 6 has to tell us about the resurrection from the dead and this is what john writes he says then i saw an angel coming down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand he laid hold of the dragon that serpent of old who is the devil and satan and bound him for a thousand years now it's very interesting uh, when i studied at pretoria at the university one of our old testament professors he stood in front of a class and i i think it must have been about 200 students maybe 150 200 one of those massive big classes and um, he stood in front of the class and he said in so many words that the serpent in the garden of eden in the book of genesis is not the devil and those days um, i kind of looked at it and i thought to myself how can he say that scripture teaches something completely different my mother was with me that day uh, she came to the university she sat with me for one day in all the different classes that i had um, and even for her it was a, a tough one uh, what we are we, what we were actually learning from these clever professors but listen to verse 2 of revelation chapter 20 and it says he laid hold of the dragon okay so the dragon is the same as, and he says, that serpent of old. We know that the serpent of old is speaking about the serpent in the Garden of Eden, who is the devil and Satan, and he bound him for a thousand years. So who is the dragon that we read about in the book of Revelation? Uh, who is the serpent of old that we find in the book of Genesis? It's the devil, Satan. Satan. So how in the world is it possible for an Old Testament professor to stand up in front of so many students and say to them that the serpent in the Old Testament is not the devil? When the New Testament clearly tells us that the serpent in the garden is for sure, definitely, the devil or Satan. All right, now he continues to say in verse 3, And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should uh, deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness, witness of Jesus and for the word of God, um, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Verse 5. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years okay now our passage tells us that the first resurrection will be enjoyed by those believers who were beheaded now who were basically martyred for the witness to jesus for the word of god uh, they had not worshipped the beast or his image they did not receive the mark of the beast on their foreheads or on their hands 
they will be part of the first resurrection. And, and the book of Revelation just tells us that this group of people will be part of this re first resurrection. Uh, obviously, there will be others who die as well. But they will not be part of this first resurrection. And our passage tells us very clearly. You see, the first resurrection is exclusively for believers. The second resurrection is going to be for those who, who died without Christ. Because they will be going from the resurrection to the white throne judgment of God. All right, So they're going to be raised from the dead so that they can be judged by God. Okay, But they're not going to be part of the first resurrection. They're going to be part of the second resurrection. And when they are resurrected, they will be judged by God and then cast into the lake of fire. All right. But the first resurrection, exclusively for believers. Now in Revelation chapter 20, it specifically speaks about those who, who lost their lives during the reign of Antichrist. They will reign with Christ. They call him uh, the, the, the theologians talk or those who, who are experts in, in understanding eschatology. They call it the tribulation saints. Those who die during the tribulation for their faith. Uh, but the text itself tells us more specifically it, it's those who are beheaded, those who die a martyr's death during the tribulation period. All right. So it speaks specifically about those who lost their lives during the, the reign of Antichrist. Now, they will reign with Christ for a thousand years. This is the millennial reign of Christ. This is when Jesus will sit in Jerusalem on the throne of David and he will rule the world with a um, how can I say, an iron hand, an iron fist. He will rule the nation, uh, the, the, the world uh, in righteousness. Okay, this is basically talking about the millennium. Now, our text tells us that the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. Then he says, this is the first resurrection. So basically, only those believers who died a martyr's death during the tribulation will be raised from the grave and they will reign with Jesus Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead will only be raised after the thousand years are done. When Satan is released for a little while and he can once again deceive the nations, deceive the people on the earth. And that's when um, they will come, those who died in Christ after that, they will be raised, uh, not they died without Christ, sorry, unbelievers will be raised from the dead, and then they will stand before the white throne judgment of God. All right, so the unbelievers basically stays in the grave until the thousand years are over. Now the question that arised in my mind is, what happens to those other believers who died? Okay, not everybody is going to die a martyr's death. What about those who die a, a normal, natural death. And, and another one, what about those who died before the tribulation period, who died in Christ? Now, those who were not martyrs, but believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who died in Christ. Now, if we look at the first resurrection, it seems like there are three groups who will enjoy the first resurrection. And the first group is basically the martyrs that Revelation chapter 20 speaks about. And this will be during the tribulation period. Those who, who basically are beheaded by the Antichrist as he persecutes the church and as he um, goes after God's people, um, they will be the first group. Okay, we've looked at them. Then the second group are those believers who will be raised from the dead. And this is in accordance to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. That's when the trumpet sound will sound. And that's when Jesus Christ will appear in the air. And those who died in Christ will rise first and they will meet Jesus in the air. And those who uh, have not died yet, they will be changed in an instant to meet Christ Jesus in the air with those who were raised from the dead. Okay. So it, it basically seems that if the saint, uh, that the saints... Uh, of the of the church age will be resurrected during what seems to be like a first phase kind of thing of the f of the resurrection of the first resurrection and and we see it then in first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 18 of uh, verse 13 to 18 now 
it basically this passage describes the resurrection of believers not unbelievers only believers and according to paul because he's the one who wrote this letter now this resurrection will involve all those who have fallen asleep in jesus and those who are alive who will be changed in an instant to meet christ in the air let's read the passage uh, verse 13 to 18 of first thessalonians 4 it says but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Verse 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep, which means those who died. Nah. Verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. This is the return of Jesus Christ. Nah. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Verse 17, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 speaks about the dead in Christ. Now I want you to be clear on this. In the New Testament, the idea of being in Christ basically refers to those who have been baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. That's what it means to be in Christ. It means to be baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. Then you are in Christ. Okay? And this basically excludes Old Testament saints. Even though they will also be saved, but it excludes them for they did not die in Christ. They were not baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit when they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, because of their saving faith. The, the Old Testament saints obviously believed in Messiah that was to come and that was going to bring, how can I say, fulfill uh, the promises of God in the Old Testament and he's going to bring the perfect sacrifice and, he's going to, and, and that he's going to save the, the Jewish people. But the thing is, the Old Testament saints did not die in Christ. Okay, so the question then is, when are the Old Testament saints resurrected? It's a good question. Okay. We we'll look at that in a moment. But for now, we read in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Beloved, <clears throat> here we have the trumpet sound, which means this is the return of Christ. This is the description of Jesus Christ's return to this earth when the trumpet is sounded by the angel. All right, so we are looking at a time, I believe, after the tribulation period. That's just before God's wrath is poured out on this earth. That's when the trumpet is going to sound. That's when Jesus Christ is going to return. I do not believe that we are going to be exempt from the tribulation and from the persecution of the Antichrist and the persecution of the world. But I do believe that God will protect us. And that many believers are going to die a martyr's death by beheading uh, during the tribulation period. But God will not allow us to go through his wrath. Now, I know there's people that say that the seven-year tribulation period, it is the wrath of God upon the people of the earth. I do not believe that. I really don't. Um, I do believe it's God's judgment. Okay, It's definitely God's judgment on the earth. And I believe it's going to be a very tough time for Israel and it will be a time that will never be again. And it is a time that has never been before. They're going to experience extreme persecution. They're going to ex experience extreme, um, how can I say, hostility towards them, right? But I believe that the believers will also be on the earth at that specific stage. God will protect them, obviously. Uh, and in as much as he wants us to to basically continue to spread the gospel and preach the truth of God's word. But we will be persecuted, seriously persecuted. All right. And then before the wrath of God is poured out, that's right at the end of the tribulation period. Um, 
the time of Jacob's trouble, that second part of the tribulation, where the, the, the Jews realizes or Israel realizes that they've been serving the Antichrist for three and a half years, and then the persecution of the Jews starts by the, through the Antichrist, uh, that's going to be a tough time for Israel. Yeah, they call it the time of Jacob's trouble. But for us as believers, I believe that God will protect us. Um, and then before his wrath, before the wrath of God is poured out on this earth and on the inhabitants of the earth and the unbelievers, I believe that this First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18, uh, resurrection is going to take place. All right. But there's a third group. And this third group is basically the Old Testament believers or the Old Testament saints. Remember that everybody is saved the same way. Uh, the faith of Abraham was counted as righteousness unto him. Not his good works. Not the fact that he took uh, Isaac and went to sacrifice him. No, 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 no. The faith of Abraham, because he's called the father of faith. Yeah, he's, the, he's the father of our faith. Uh, because he believed first that... Uh, and he believed in the substitutionary atonement. He believed that God will give a substitute for, for, for his son, Isaac. All right? So he already had faith in Jesus, and he didn't even know that Jesus was going to be a substitutionary. Um, as, yeah, he was going to die a substitutionary death on our behalf. Now, the Old Testament seems to place the resurrection of the Old Testament saints after the tribulation all right in daniel chapter 12 that's immediately it speaks about immediately after the tribulation or the there's a description of the tribulation and the preceding chapter uh, there's deliverance that is promised to israel and that is at the close of the tribulation listen to daniel chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 remember this is prophetic um how can i say prophetic literature it is telling us about what is going to happen to Israel at the end, and it says the following. Daniel chapter 12, we're going to read verse 1 and 2. It says, At the time, or at that time, Michael shall stand up, and gr the, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. So Michael is basically the angel that is set over Israel. All right. And it says, And there shall be a time of trouble. This is talking about the tribulation. Na? The time of Jacob's trouble. The Great Tribulation Period. This is the second um, three and a half years of the Tribulation Period. And it says, Such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people, that's the Jews or Israel, shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, those who are saved. And verse 2 says, And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right, so this is interesting because it speaks about some will be risen to resurrected to um, everlasting life, and others will be uh, resurrected to shame, to be basically be condemned to hell. Now. The Old Testament saints, specifically Israel, will be raised from the dead. It's, it, it is, according to uh, Daniel chapter 12, looks like at the end of the tribulation period. Okay. Now, in 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 13, we read, So that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So when Jesus returns... Now, that's when he rides on his white horse, he's going to come with all of his saints. Now, what is a little confusing here is the fact that there are some of the Jews, the Old Testament um, or Israel, that is raised at the end of the tribulation period, some to eternal life and some not. Okay. The thing is, and it says that it's a blessing to be in the first resurrection. So, to me, it seems that it, when it comes to the nation of Israel, when it, or let's say, when it comes to the church and New Testament believers uh, and the martyrs in the tribulation period, when they um, are resurrected, they are believers and they will go in to God's glory forever and ever. And the, 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 the dead in Christ, the Gentiles who are not saved, they are not resurrected. 
But when it comes to Israel, it seems like God raises both the unsaved and the saved. Okay? He raises both of them. And obviously, those who are saved to go with Jesus, to be with Christ, and those who are not saved to be condemned forever and ever. Exactly how that works, it is a mystery. And so you will find that in eschatology, there are quite a few things that are really a mystery. It, it is hard to understand. All right. But we do know that at the end of the tribulation period, Israel will be raised from the dead. Okay. Now, when Jesus returns, all of his saints will return with him. And because they are part of the first resurrection, it says that the second death will have nothing on them. Obviously, this does not include those, um, how can I say, from the nation of Israel who are raised at the end of the tribulation period and they did not believe, on, uh, how can I say, to be saved and they are condemned. Okay, But for those who believe and are raised from the dead, death will have nothing on them because they will live with Christ forever and ever. Beloved, that, that's what um, I can see from the, how can I say, from the New Testament about and the Old Testament about this first resurrection. And this first resur resurrection is very important because it is the resurrection that is central to the Christian faith. Obviously, the gospel is né? that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. There's the gospel. It includes the resurrection of Christ. But Jesus is the firstborn from the dead, and those who die in Christ, at the end of the day, they will all be raised. Um, how can I say it? Just like Jesus was raised. And that's the first resurrection. Okay. Blessed are those who are part of the first resurrection because uh, they will be, uh, how can I say, they will be in eternal glory with the, the glorious one forever and ever. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And then at the end of the, uh, at the end of the thousand years, those who died without Christ, those who were unsaved, they will be raised from the dead to stand before the white throne of God and to be judged for what they've done uh, while they were on this earth. And the greatest thing they will be judged uh, about is the fact that they did not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it is faith in Jesus Christ alone that saves us. Okay, Because we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Okay, Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can come to you. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for the first resurrection. Well, thank you for, the, for everything that's going to happen at the end. And thank you so much that we can study these things, even though some of it is hard. Really, really hard to, to put together. But Father, thank you so much that as time goes on, especially when we're going to get to that time when this is going to happen, we will understand it 100%. Until then, please give us the faith to... Hold on to the fact that the resurrection will take place and we will be part of the resurrection because we are saved. Because you saved us by your grace. Through faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. And thank you so much that we will be with Christ forever and ever. Because he is who he is. Uh, he has never changed and he will never change. Uh, thank you so much, Father, for the resurrection and that we can be part of the resurrection to eternal life. So we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, thank you very much for listening. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may he give you his peace. God willing, until next time, bye-bye.